It's not a Mighty Morphin movie without Bulk and Skull. The infamous Gold Bikini might get retired. And Preacher might be too hot for TV. Plus, it's Max's birthday, so there's a puppy. It's Up at Noon Live. Again, we made it back. The Somehow. exciting thirteenth episode of Up and yeah. Noon Live, the the cliffhanging season finale to the twelfth episode. That's one of the, the weirdest things about working on the internet is that there's no real seasons. Yeah, like I've been doing video on the internet for a while, and there's that kind of like people will kind of manufacture seasons in the same way that TV shows will have like they'll have like red carpet premieres, but it's like doesn't really work the same. You know, people never you know went to a theater to watch. TV premieres, and no. really the internet doesn't really have seasons because it's kind of always on. But You know what that means, right? It means we never get a break. We never get to stop. We, we always do, keep we going. We do get a magical birthday show, which is what we're doing here today for a very special boy. Not you. Not you. No, it's Max Scoville. You guys yeah. are twins today. This hey, is your everybody. dog, Peppers. I'm Max Scoville. This is Brian Altano. Hi. And this is Peppers, who's just hanging out with us because he's it's, it's my birthday. That's right. Hi, Peppers. Peppers, look at the camera. There he is. You should know better. You're what an you entertainment dog. Do you, you guys go. do you guys shop at the at the Bob's Big Boys together? Where do you guys get these? Do you think I go to a store called Bob's? What's wrong with you? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, do you, you go to a fancy fashion store to a dress fa- like a, a real clown? fancy fashion store? What are you, one of our commenters? Anyway, if you're one of our commenters, thank you for being here. That's right. Peppers. Shh. I said commenters. He got all he got all worked up. That's uh, right. If you're watching us live, you can be watching us live on IGN.com on one of the major, many IGN apps on uh, PS4, Xbox One, or Roku. We're also on Twitch. We're on YouTube. Brian is trying to keep an eye on the comments of some of those things. That's right. Uh, if you I'm want right to tweet here. at us, use the hashtag up at noon. We check that out. Uh, this week, we're sponsored by... Pupcake Pup- Cupcakes, made with real pup cake. No one actually knows what that is. It's probably poop. <laughs> That's gross. We, you made that like five minutes before we had to come in here. Uh, that's kind of how we run the show. It's, uh, I would say it's a tight ship, but it's not. Yep. It's like a weird floppy loose ship that's under the sea. It's like one of those weird ships you put in an iguana's fish tank. We got a great tweet right off the bat here from William Holbert. Shout out to William Holbert. Good friend of ours. I gave my wife orders to not bother me while I watch Up at Noon. Ha. How long do you think she will obey that? Hopefully for 58 more minutes. Yeah. Or maybe she could come hang out. We got a dog. That's Check right. it out. Hey, uh, the, the wife. Can what kind, of, what kind of treats do you have today for this so, dog? I have some uh, some cheddar. He likes a nice piece of cheese. Okay, that's Peppers. real. That's real cheddar or a dog's cheddar. Give me a high cheddar? five. Give me a high five. There you go, buddy. My dog knows how to high five. It's we should give good. him a job here. Hey, Peppers, what are your qualifications? Welcome aboard. You're hired. Shake my hand, damn it. I'm giving you the job. <laughs> He's trying to negotiate. Shake, shake the hand. He wants higher pay raise. All right, he licks the fingers. Don't ever lick a man's fingers in a job interview. No, that, uh, that'll get you kicked out to the curb. Unless you're Actually, working some, in the valley. Some, San Fernando some jobs, valley. you'll get hired for that. Look at that bushy yeah. tail he has. Yeah. He's a good dog. Anyway. Um, we got a really good show today. Yeah, we, we got some cool uh, stuff to talk about. There's, there's fun things. Um, let's start off on a negative note. Um, <laughs> right. Earlier early this week, we got a look at uh, AMC's Preacher TV show. That's this right. This is based on the wonderful Vertigo comic by Garth Ennis and Steve Dillon. Uh, ran in the 90s. It's a very 90s comic series. It's very, also very gruesome. It's very much one of those kind of like, in the same way that Sin City was like, this isn't a comic for kids. This is kind of all over the place. Except like, whereas... Like, Sin City's kind of, like, old-timey, like, gory noir. Uh, Preacher is one of the most just wonderfully gruesome, offensive, dirty, filthy, puerile, vul- vulgar things I've ever read. And I don't know how that's going to work on AMC. That looks like the kid that uh, gets he gets uh, scared with the raptor claw at the beginning of Jurassic Park. Yeah, Park. I'm like, so I haven't read Preacher in a while. I'm not sure if they're actually showing scenes accurately. This is written by Seth Rogen, and Seth Rogen's a pretty cool dude, in my opinion. Yeah. But I'm... Very wary of this, in that it just, if you showed this to me and you didn't tell me it was Preacher, I'd be like, it's some AMC show. This looks, I mean, it looks like, um, you know, Justified or, or something out of Sons of Anarchy or something. It yeah. just doesn't look like Preacher to me. Uh, Preacher, if you've never read it, is about a guy who has the word of God as a superpower. So anything he says, people have to do. Uh, for instance, if he tells someone to go F himself, that happens. Wow, really? That is a thing that happens in the comic. It's a, It's a very... Very vulgar comic. It's a little bit like if Tarantino had done uh, Kevin Smith's Dogma. Sure. Uh, and the thing is, people people point out to me that, like, I mean, AMC's gotten pretty blue with, like, uh, Breaking Bad and The Walking Dead. Uh, but I feel like, like, Breaking Bad, first of all, I'm, I'm, I think that's not really a good indication of AMC adapting something. Because that's yeah. an original TV show. It's meant to be a TV show. Right. Whereas The Walking Dead, they took a lot of liberties with that, too, and they changed it around. Plus, The Walking Dead is, it's gory. It's very violent. But if there's anything that we know about America, it's that violence is fine, but anything else, 
it's never it's never too sexual, or right. at least if there was stuff in the comics that got into the sort of that territory, yeah, uh, it never really creeped its way into The Walking Dead. And yeah. you're right in that The Walking Dead has taken the source material of the comic book and changed it a lot, which kind of gives them leeway to say, hey, we can take another sort of like gritty, realistic, M-rated mm -hmm. comic book and go in a different direction with it. But what you're saying is there's some stuff from Preacher that defines Preacher that you just can't put on... So on, Look, on basic cable. This isn't really a spoiler. This is kind of the premise of the entire comic, but the whole thing is about a guy who's going to kill God. Like, he's on a revenge mission against God. And that's not really something that I feel like American movie classics is going to do the most justice to. Right. Not to mention there's a ton of weird butt stuff in there. There's a part where a guy gets a bike parked in his butt crack. Like... I don't know how you I don't know how you tackle that on like primetime basic cable TV. Even if you have, yeah, we're tackling those, it here pretty is, well. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, welcome to the internet. Off's in front of the dog, by the yeah, way. The dog is a small is a small baby. If he understands uh, park a, a bike in a butt crack, then I'd really. Why Why doesn't he know stay? Huh? <laughs> why can't you learn the basic things? So what anyway. if this, What if this show was on HBO? Like that's the is, thing is, is, HBO, is that like grass is greener over there? HBO was looking at it for a while in the same way that at one point they were looking at Watchmen, uh, but they I guess. They nixed it. They didn't want it. So it went to AMC instead. Uh, I mean, Seth Rogen, like I said, cool guy. He's a, he's a comic nerd. He's, he's got good taste in, in puerile, gross, violent things. I mean, uh, what is it? Uh, this all is the, his, this is the end, and, and Pineapple yeah. Express are great examples of that. But, I mean, I have my, I have my reservations about Preacher. That said, big fan. Uh, I actually, hey, let's, let's check this out. I have an image of me. I went to a, a costume party dressed as Jesse Custer at one point. So here's a real, here's a real great photo of me from, uh, from my finer... My finer younger years. Let's take a look. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, Me and She-Hulk were at a comic book party. So did you have to explain to literally everybody that you weren't just a weird priest? Uh, yeah, pretty much. It was a comic book party full of nerdy people, but it still was like, I guess Preacher wasn't an AMC TV show at that point. Um, and what's up? What's what's going on with She-Hulk? Did you guys uh, did you guys get, it's it, a, get it together? That's a long story. That's a long story. Really? Anyway, let's move on. Did let's change the subject. On those white pants? What if we change the subject? <laughs> All right, we fine. can do that. Yes, um, let's do that. What do we got next? Uh, this this is a I, okay. We we just talked about getting it on a little bit with bike parts, but for for those of us who grew up in a different era, uh, Slave Leia or really Carrie Fisher in this gold bikini sort of defined sexuality for a lot of us. Mm -hmm. I know there's me, a Friends episode about that. It was, like, you know, and it's it's kind of like it's weird how you sort of step into that world. Like, I mean, I, I feel like I, I dated women or, or that they reminded me of Princess Leia for oh, most of my life. I'm I'm married to uh, you know a, a very beautiful brunette woman now. Uh, she's I've never I've never had her fight a giant swamp monster like Jabba the Hutt. Ah! Well, if not including <laughs> me. <laughs> uh, so, now, a lot of people, obviously, they're coming in as Star Wars now, fresh for the first time, from a very different perspective. A lot of fathers bringing their daughters into Toys R Us to buy an action figure. We've got Rey, who's one of the coolest, probably, female protagonists that we've seen in Star Wars in a while. Very empowering, very awesome. She's got this cool bow staff and this mm -hmm. sand gear, and she's, she's out there rummaging, just looking for stuff to stay alive. She's a, she's a powerful figure. You know, like, female, females are, are, are creative leads on Star Wars now. They're yeah. working on the games. Kathleen Kennedy is, yeah, is definitely they're working on the movies. That, that. Kathleen Kennedy also said that the, the, the Star Wars could be directed by a female at one point. So, that being I said... I she said a woman. A woman, yeah. A female. She didn't say a female. <laughs> That's we've captured one of the females of the species, one. and we've put her in our uh, Sparty cloning cylinders. So that being said, uh, Disney is probably, or what we're reading, is they're sort of backing away from the Slave Leia motif. Yeah. Princess Leia in a slave outfit in a toy store is not really a good look when you're trying to move Star Wars forward. Now, it had its place in time in the 80s, yeah. uh, and there is a weird story to all that. I mean, Princess Leia is captured. Mm -hmm. uh, she does eventually overcome her oppressor well, by choking is, him to death until green stuff comes out of his right. mouth. Right. It's the whole the whole costume is very much an ode to kind of like old old fantasy stuff like yeah. Frank Frazetta like Conan the Barbarian poster covers you know kind of um uh Heavy metal. Flash Gordon saving the saving yeah. the princess. Yeah, they're very much going for this fantasy art look. Uh and it's it's like a it's an awesome like piece of a costume but the fact that it was kind of like thrown in a movie and they're not going to go back and like cover her up like yeah. probably I really doubt they would do that. No. They're not going to go back and and change Return of the Jedi anymore because if they do it at this point it will fall apart it will physically break the film will explode they, they added uh, enough garbage to the Jabba's palace but, scene anyway yeah but they're just kind of pumping the brakes on any kind of merchandising that's like hey go buy an action figure of this and it's like I'm totally cool with that. Me too. And I think like a lot of people, they, their knee-jerk reaction is that... Because that makes my Slave Leia collection way more valuable. Exactly. 
But a lot of people had a knee-jerk reaction that this was basically uh, the PC police coming down on Star Wars and taking over and stuff like that. And I didn't, I didn't really see it that, that way at all. I see it as like that was a, a place in time where that was a character that existed, and they're backing away from it, and that's okay. Like, they, like you said, they're not retroactively ruining the movies or changing them or anything like that. They're just pumping the brakes on the mm -hmm. merchandise. It's been out there for decades. And this is official merchandise, mind you. You can still, I bet you with the rise of 3D printing in like, five years be able to go on Etsy and search gold bikini and you can buy a 3D printed gold bikini for someone to wear presumably. You can go to any comic convention and buy dozens of like paintings and statues of Slave Leia because yeah. people will still make that. You but can see, you this can is see. just being like, hey, maybe it's kind of crass for people to walk into the Disney store with you know, their daughters who are suddenly excited about BB-8 and Ray and all that and be like, Daddy, what's that? You so know? I honestly, like, I don't think it's the, it's even the bikini attire because it's like, you know, in terms of mm -hmm. Disney films, uh, you know, like the Little Mermaid's basically in a bikini yeah. and wearing a shell for the entire movie. Right. Uh, but it's because she's a slave. Like, sure. that's the problem it's here. The chain, it's, the chain around the neck is definitely. Yeah, it's that word. Like, I have, I have a Slave Leia action figure on my desk. Uh, and she has a chain around her neck that you can tie to this Jabba the Hutt's hand. To be fair, that's her weapon. Yeah, she him. does use it to kill Jabba the Hutt. Uh, but it, ultimately, it's it's not the best direction for the film. I'm glad they're doing what they're doing. Um, and there's plenty of more things to be excited about for Star Wars. Yeah. What do you guys think? Let us know in, uh, in the comments, on the, the chats, of the various things you're watching. I'll use the hashtag up at noon. Uh, right. If you'd like to have any questions about this dog, that's another way. This is Peppers. You ask some questions. Why is there a dog in your video show? We don't know. Uh, moving on, one of the big things people are talking about this week with Star Wars is the new posters, which we have right here. I put them all over each other because if you haven't seen them, I'm not going to go through them one by one. Right. Let's take a look. They all have people putting things in their eyes. This is like lightsaber safety 101. Uh, I love that Leia's just in the middle of a very intense PowerPoint presentation. She's like, yeah, here's my Excel spreadsheet about the Battle of Tanab or whatever. Um, Han Solo honestly looks like he's crying and he's using his blaster to try to hide his face. So, fun fact about that, Harrison Ford's nose is actually crooked in real life. So they didn't, that wasn't like a weird perspective thing. Oh, right. That's not like the golden eye cover where you suddenly picture Pierce Brosnan having like a weird frog face. Why is, a, why is Leia off, off model here? She's the only one not really, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Compositionally, she's completely different than the rest of them. I, yeah. I don't know if that means anything narratively. Uh, it's, it actually, it's really cool. It reminds me of the scene on Hoth when she's like standing behind that big. I think that's sort what they're of, going for, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. It's a really cool throwback. So anyway, a lot of people were kind of underwhelmed by this. I mean, some people were really excited about it, but we kind of sat around and looked at them and we're like, these are what are really whatever Star Wars posters. We've seen some amazing Star Wars posters. These are kind of the ones that you always get this close to a movie coming out. They're just, they're basically just marketing materials. Yeah. You know, they're not trying to like, they're trying to show you something that's just enough that you're talking about it, like we are, uh, but not enough that you're like, wait a minute, that I, happens? Who's that? I What's think, that? I Where think is the, that thing? the best way they work is when you're walking down like the long aisle in a movie theater and you get to go by like six of them in a row. Mm -hmm. Ant-Man did the same kind of thing where they just had every single character in the movie, even like the guy that played a cop, and Ant-Man's in the corner somewhere or in somebody's hand or on somebody's glasses. It's a cool way to sort of like tell a story. These are all the characters yeah. in here. You don't necessarily need to get all of them for your house. They're not like the premier official movie posters. But... Uh, the, the one recently that we saw that we loved was, was fantastic. Like, you can't actually buy a print of it yet. It's really cool. I yeah. wish I could. But it got us talking about and thinking about our favorite movie posters of all time, mm -hmm. which is a weird discussion you and exactly. I figured out. Exactly, because it's kind of like, it's a lot like soundtracks in the sense that you can try to separate, you can separate the, the music by itself, but it's always going to make you think of the movie. And the yeah. same with the poster. Like, you were saying that you like the poster for Jurassic Park. Right. But then you're like, I guess that's kind of just because I like Jurassic Park. And you want to go deeper there. It's, it's also because, like, that's one of the rare instances where the logo for the movie is actually in the movie. It's the logo for the yeah. park in the movie. So everything, yeah, it, it comes full circle. But it's, it's a cool logo, but on a, on a poster, it's basically just a logo floating on black. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not the most fascinating thing. Not and there's exciting. like a, a, a pull quote at the bottom about yeah. 65 million years in the making or whatever. Uh, I, always, I, like, I always try to separate that, like, do I like the composition? Do I like the movie? Um, there's, some, there's some really weird ones out there. I often, I sometimes will still see old movies based on the posters if they pop up on something I'm looking at online. Yep. Uh, one movie that I love is, uh, is Sorcerer, which was directed by William Friedkin, who did like, yep. uh, he did like um, uh, The Exorcist and, and French Connection and stuff. And it's just got this really in intense picture of a truck driving over a bridge. It looks like this scary monster truck that's chasing somebody. It's called Sorcerer. It's not, it's not about magic. It's not about evil trucks. It's about some guy, guys doing some stuff in the jungle. Mm -hmm. It's kind of disappointing on that front, but still, very cool movie. Worth checking out. I don't know. You can. Kate, what, do, what do you guys think? What are your favorite posters? Tell us. Yeah, there's, actually, there's actually a, a bunch of articles on IGN of like, here are the best posters ever. I think we did a top 100 because we do. Yeah. We, 
We do top 100s for everything. People get mad at those, but those are actually really fun to work on. Yeah. Like, honestly. You get to get in a room and yell about what things yeah. you think are the best. Speaking of getting in rooms and yelling about things, uh, a great place to do that on the internet is Reddit. And Reddit popped up with this pretty impressive Star Wars conspiracy theory, which posited the idea that Jar Jar yeah. Binks was, in fact, a force... A, a force, a, a, what do you call it? Force attuned, force using. He was force, force sensitive. sensitive. He wasn't sensitive. He was tough. He was yeah. basically Jar Jar Banks is a Sith Lord who is either working in cahoots with Palpatine for yeah. the entire thing, or possibly more powerful than him. Uh, and they explain this by saying that uh, you know Jar Jar shows up and he's like way more athletic and than anybody else you see in the movie. He's doing like massive flips, and the only yeah. other people you see doing that are Jedi Knights. And then of course, why would they take him along? And then you realize that every time he's kind of like when they when they decide to take him uh, with them, when Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon take him with him, or when he becomes a senator, there's always some scene where Jar Jar waves his hands around, and you're like, stupid Jar Jar, you cartoon character, but then you're like, maybe he's just playing the fool and yep. like waving his arms. Great theory to go read. So th this thing actually really blew up over the, over the week, and it's been, it's been kind of phenomenal watching it happen. Uh, and it's really cool because we got to see this character from a different perspective. It doesn't really change the fact that we hate him, but sure. it, 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 it obviously adds an extra wrinkle, and it's Pretty mostly ridiculous, right? right? What but, I love though is is that they suggest that the reason that this was all part of Lucas's plan. There's some old quote from Lucas where he's like, you know, he's going for this kind of this fairy tale thing, and this is what Yoda is. When you first meet Yoda, he's kind of this like goofy slapstick character, and then you find out he's actually really important. And yeah. that's one of these things that Lucas is going for. That's like from a fairy tale where you meet the weird old witch on the side of the road and you ignore them and keep going, and it turns out that they're important. They're the devil or whatever. You know, devil went down to Georgia, that kind yep. of thing. Uh, and the idea was that Jar Jar is annoying. To everybody in the first movie, and then you find out that in episode two, he's Count Dooku, and that that whole fight would be between Yoda and and Jar Jar, which would be really really weird. But then the theory is like maybe Lucas realized that everyone hated him, so yeah. he just kind of pulled back on that front. So what I really really love about this theory that just added an extra wrinkle to it is Ahmed Best, who is the voice of Jar Jar Binks. Uh, on Twitter said, I will say this, it feels really good when the hidden meaning behind the work is seen, no matter how long it takes. Hashtag TPM, which maybe, is the Phantom Menace. Maybe Jar Jar was the Phantom Menace. And like that, yeah, that was a little over the top. So he actually went in with it, he tweeted a picture of a fake script that says, Jar Jar's Great Adventure, Star Wars Episode Two, written by George Lucas and Jonathan Hales. <laughs> okay. So obviously that didn't happen. Uh, Jar Jar actually in Episode Two was like way pulled back. Because I think yeah. obviously people were just like, yep. I think I think there was there's a big turnaround yeah. for that. Uh, you and I have been kind of geeking out about uh, Star Wars pretty much all year for all of our lives. Uh, one of the things that I was looking at recently was a lot of the promotional material that was leading up to Episode One and sort of how it feels or how it felt at the time versus how we feel going in Episode Seven right now. And there was a lot like I, I got Star Wars magazine and I remember looking through pictures of it and being like, oh man, here's the first shot of Tatooine or like here's a you know here's here's that hut with the shadow of Darth Vader on it. Or, mm -hmm. You know, here's some prop closet masks and stuff like that. And kind of looking at that and going, am I setting myself up for failure right now? Uh, and one of the things I remember never really seeing was Jar Jar Binks. Was they kind of really... They, they stayed away from him. He does show up in the first trailer. Yeah. If you watch the very first trailer for episode one, what's amazing about it is that they do show so much. They show, like, basically like if you're fast-forwarding through that movie. And they show the final show. fight. They show everything. Yeah, they show a little bit of everything. Uh, so even if the Force Awakens winds up being sort of a letdown. Uh, if there's stuff in it that's new and visual, like something that we haven't seen, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, if it consists of only scenes we've already seen, then my biggest concern is that it would be boring and kind of dry. So Yeah, because I feel like you and I have spent 2015 sort of piecing together shots from the trailer and the Entertainment Weekly magazine spread and the teaser and that, you know, 10-minute uh, behind-the-scenes thing. Mm -hmm. Right, Peppers? Peppers. This is it. This is how it, this is how it goes when he you guys crashed. talk about Star yeah, Wars just, at home. Huh? Yeah, he just fell, fell asleep. So he's what's funny is, where's, his, where's his little Boba Fett? He's got a Boba Fett around here. Oh, here it is. There he is on the floor. Peppers, you want to play with Boba Fett? Yeah, I'm one of those people who dresses his dog up. God, look at so him. So speaking of dead. dogs, we have our own Star Wars theories, right? Now, one of mine is that uh, Chewbacca is basically a rescue dog that Han Solo brings around in his Uber. Now, Han Solo was basically getting drunk at a bar, and these two hippie wizards showed up, and they were just like, oh, we've been drinking all day. Can you take care of us? And uh, they, they get in his car, and then Han Solo's like, yeah, I'll bring the damn dog with me, that dirty muffin ragger. And they get out, and they fly around in space, and all of a sudden, like three movies later, uh, Han Solo's like, what the hell am I doing here? So by most of Jedi, Han Solo's just like, 
I, I, why are we, why am I in this net? <laughs> yeah. What's going on here? Pretty much. But I mean, I, I will agree with you that they're like, Chewie is a beloved character, but he never says anything. And like, 3PO understands him, but 3PO also like understands moisture evaporators, you know, like. I think he's a liar. That's one maybe of my he's theories. a liar. That's another. That's another good theory too. I think but he I, knows like, three languages. You point out that like there's this kind of Maggie Simpson effect in in like a New Hope when you see you know Han's like punch it Chewie and he already always pushes stuff first and then Chewie's just kind of like, and it's like I, I train my dog to yeah. look like he's typing. I didn't really, but I probably could if I just put cheese whiz on the keyboard and <laughs> woke him up. You're killing me here. Anyway, I like I love the idea. God. Look, he looks like he passed the. God, man, poor dog. Um, I do like the idea that Obi Wan is a drunk. That's my that's my Star yeah. Wars theory. Yeah. Uh, because he, you see this, you see him. He's he's so he's so bright eyed and so happy and so thrilled at the beginning of Episode One. He's like, Master, do you really think they're going to let us die from this gas in the conference room? <laughs> Patience, Obi Wan. And then they like they meet Jar Jar, and he's like. Why would you bring... And he's like, The Force has been planned for all of us, Obi-Wan. And then they meet Anakin, and he's just like, Okay. And then they, he gets stuck with this kid. They have he's, those and he's, just, he's just like, Yeah, all right. But the whole thing is, is I feel like he just gets... He's kind of like bad Santa. Like yeah. He just gets stuck with this kid. He's like, what do you, what do you what do you want what you want to you want to date a queen what why are you why are you doing that and then like he show, episode two he's just like he's just annoyed the whole time they get in that big chase scene with Django Fett or Zam Wessel or whatever and he winds up and he's just like all right we're going to a bar and then he like meets Elon Sleeze Bagano or whatever and he's yeah. just doing shots um cut to you know a new hope and he's just like he's he lives out in the middle of nowhere he's got a big beard he's he's wearing like a Jawa robe and he shows up and Luke's like. Hey, my uh, my aunt and uncle always told me I shouldn't talk to you. And he's like, oh, no, nonsense. Here's your father's gun when we were in a war together. We had a good times. Hey, you know what we should do? You should drive me into town. We should go to another bar. And then you should sell your, sell your car so that we can go and blow up a government office. And Luke's like, <laughs> okay. All right. Well, everyone I know is dead because I left yeah. for the first time. No, he's he's kind of like kind of Charlie Manson. Yeah. Kind of some Stockholm stuff going on there. I don't know. Star Wars is pretty messed up. Yeah, I'm a big fan. We still like it. That's right. What else we got today? Uh, hey Brian, remember video games? Yeah, remember I'm a big video fan games of when they would come out on consoles and we'd play with them with little buttons and joysticks and mm -hmm. thumb things. And uh, well, now they don't do that anymore. They all come out for. Uh, these things. Uh, it was announced that there are going to be brand those, new those games. baby toys. Brand new Titanfall, Contra, and Micro Machines games coming out mm -hmm. for mobile devices. Oh boy. Yeah, Respawn Entertainment is teaming up with Nexon to make a Titanfall iOS game. Konami, I guess, copyrighted a free-to-play Contra game for release in China. And Micro Machines is coming to iOS by way of Codemasters, which admittedly looks, admittedly looks kind of cute. This looks like the old Micro Machines. I love that you've got like... Titanfall, Contra, like, beloved properties. And then, like, the coolest things Micro Machines ever did was help Kevin McAllister defeat robbers. Yeah, uh, that's a really good point. They're, I, I like Micro Machines, but they're not really, like, I don't really consider them, like, a video game property. Uh, that being said, like, it's kind of a bummer that, like, there's not, they're not even, like, trying to, like, there's no Micro Machines games coming out for, like, Xbox Live or PSN or anything. Yep. Not even, like, throwaway junk food ones. They're just kind of like, yeah, mobile's the only place we're going to make some money. Yeah, this is now. That's right, trailer. It's about tiny cars running over pretzels. I love how they set that up like it, like it's been such a jump. And it's really just kind of the same. Yeah. Which is fine. I think that's adorable. They got realistic pretzels now that you yep. can drive over with your little cars. I just hope this means that micro machines are coming back. Like actual ones. And you can go get them and feed them to your dog. Is this, is this the future, though? more fun than him just sitting there. <laughs> Did yeah, he he's, die? No, he's very out of it. We Peppers. actually got a couple of questions about him, by the way. Peppers. Um... Ryan Allett says, uh, what breed of dog is Peppers? He's Peppers a pom is a Pomeranian. He's a pom-pom, right? He's a little pom. Yeah. Do you want me to take out the Hawaiian? Are you just like, are you just like a, uh, like a little kid in church and you hate this sweater I made you wear? <laughs> I think that's kind of what it is. Hey, Peppers, why don't you show the nice people something? Peppers? What are you looking at? Are you just looking at the light? Uh, Well-dressed punk says, hot studio lights plus fur coat equals overheated dog. Let him go. Hey. It's actually very cold in it's here. It's freezing in here. That's why you put a little jacket on him. Come on, take off your Hawaiian shirt. Oh boy! Uh -oh. You can watch a dog undress on the internet, isn't it great, boys and girls? We just did an undressing video, but yeah, I think this is the future, right, Max? Pretty much. Dogs taking over television. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna get 
we're gonna get a lot of mobile games. That's kind of how it is. Uh, somebody, uh, we talked about this, I think, on Podcast Beyond together, but like console sales, I think, in the grand scheme of things, are, are sort of down. And that's somebody was like, do you think this is because of, of PC gaming taking over? And it's like, no, because that's more expensive and more complicated than console yeah. gaming. I know Steam sales. It's more expensive price of admission. Point being, you can get like a, a throwaway phone for your for your dumb kid or for your dumb self and play Micro Machines or Titanfall or Contra. So I don't know. It's it's like it's sort of bittersweet to be like, oh, I'm clinging to this old format. You know, like. Eh. Well, it's just kind of like it. It it's when you hear about a new property coming out, but it turns out to be like a ride somewhere instead yeah. of like a new movie. Like when pretty they, much. When they made like a Jurassic Park ride, like that's a cool idea. But like at the time, I wanted them to make another Jurassic Park movie. Yeah. Um, I, I I'm worried about this future where all of our favorite properties get sequels on on our phones. And not hey because, hey like, hold hold on hold on. What? Sometimes I agree with you. Sometimes I think it's weird when they they make like oh it's Jurassic Park the ride and you wanted a new Jurassic Park. But but I got some good news that something I think is a good compromise. The Avatar Cirque du Soleil. Avatar is coming to Cirque du Soleil. We get our first photos looking at this great new French dance movie about the dinosaur. This is of course from Taruk, the first flight. The about French the, dance movie about the. You know what? No, it's a good, it's not a movie. It's a, a movie that they're turning into a dance no, no, you know present, what? You know presentation. What? You know what, Max? It's, Excuse it's, me. No, it's your Can birth- we show it's... off these great new these great new pictures from, from it's the Avatar? It's your birthday. I'm gonna let you. Ha- oh my God, that is awful. This apparently is one of the Navi from Taruk, <laughs> the first flight, the upcoming oh, Cirque du Soleil presentation. God, you think that's great? Look at this one. What the hell is that? Why are you showing me this? I think it's. I'm. A, I'm not. I think that lady in the back is at gunpoint. She doesn't want. To, why? What? What is that Beetlejuice? I think it's Michael Sarah. I mean, I'm not even kidding. That, that looks is like really him. hideous. I was gonna let this fly because it's your birthday, but you, this, this is disgusting. But hey, look at this guy. Oh! Speaking of letting it fly, what is that bone dog? It's some kind of a tree. Is that a, some sort of bat? I hope this is, is that an the unfinished... skeleton of a bat. I don't know what this is. Dude, this is disgusting. Hey, look, it's Taruk. Why are you showing Everybody me these pictures? Taruk, he's a big pterodactyl, flies around the planet Pandora. Oh God! This is really his origin story. I hate. I Who hate. are these guys? These are going to be powered by actual actual Cirque du Soleil dancers. They're going to get inside these things and wiggle them around with their this hands. This is awful. All of these look like character designs that they try to flush down a look toilet. Look at that. Look what at happened costumes. to that guy's head? Did he cut it off because he hated watching Avatar Cirque du Soleil? I think it's going to be great. I'm going to go see it. Is that Once Dennis it. Rodman? This is awful. Don't ever show me they these disgusting, nasty pictures. They haven't announced the Cirque du Soleil cast for the av- Avatar. Stop saying that. Cirque du Soleil. This is the word. I, I hate Taruk, you. the first flight, coming to places where you can fit a lot of weird costumes Shut into up. soon. Shut up! Check your local listings. Disgusting. This is, I, All I right. Know, I know it's your birthday. I'm supposed to let this fly. You're an awful man. Okay, fine. If we can't talk about Avatar, can we talk about Harry Potter? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to talk about Harry Potter. Okay, so if you missed it, there's the new... And someone's going to be mad about this. It's a Harry Potter movie. This is, uh, of course, the uh, Ferocious Beasts and Where to Find Them. Based, It's a spinoff that's based on one of the books that the children in Harry Potter had to read which is a really kind of a long walk. This is a it's little, a, deep, a deep little. Cut. I mean, luckily, the wizard world is full of interesting characters like uh, Newt Scamander, who's the who's the the main character, and he's about basically a he's a monster man who's got to go around looking for the uh, magizoologist, I believe is his job title. Uh-huh. He's, he's a wizard who got to look at dragons and stuff. What's really weird about this though is it's set in 1920s America, which apparently was the last time America was magical. Uh, I have this, I have this theory. America doesn't play a very big role in Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. They kind of they mention it here and there, but really, like they've got people coming in from France, from Bulgaria. Most of it's, I mean, it's all in the UK, but you get the sense that it's primarily in Europe. You know, occasionally they go and they're like, "Oh, there's dragons over in China or something." But the wizard world is almost more condensed than the real world, the okay. Muggle world. I have this theory that America was founded by Muggles who got hip to wizards. And they've got real scared because they realized they were surrounded by magicians. Wait, real, and they were real like, America? Real America. That's your theory. I think that the Puritans who came to America weren't looking for religious freedom. They were trying to get the hell away from wizards. You're getting away with And that's all why kinds we have so many guns today. here in America. What? I think that the Second Amendment, everybody thinks it's because of like, oh, you know, we want to have right to bear arms because of like royalty. I think wizards. I think wizards are like, we need to form a country where wizards cannot be allowed. That's my theory about Harry Potter. Okay, this, this is your birthday. So gonna, maybe, we can, maybe this... I'll be disproven by this upcoming Harry Potter film, but... Come on, J.K. Rowling. That's your theory? I know theory? what you're on about. That's my theory. I'm a Harry Potter truther. Did you... Have you ever fallen like down a large flight of cement steps as, as a youngin? Polyjuice potion can't melt steel beams. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, um... 
We got a fun game we played. It's about bar fights. Yeah, do we? But not yet, because we have an even funner game we play called Happy Birthday, Max Scoville. What the there hell? There he is, the birthday boy. What? To you. <laughs> Happy birthday oh, to you. Don't get the dog. Oh, is that a candy corn cake? <laughs> You're scared of the you're scared the hell out of my dog. <laughs> Take the dog. Aww. Aww. This is really unsettling. Aww. What does it say? It's a candy corn cake. Oh, cool. <laughs> Wait, no, is that, no, is that smoke will go off. off? Okay. Camera, get out. All right. <laughs> hey, if the sprinklers go on, this is going to be really bad. Max, have some cake. We have, we have so many cakes on this show. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'm gonna eat a whole cake for lunch. Don't do that. I'm gonna you pass are, out in the street. This, you know, this is actually this is gonna be a really hard test for me to sit in front of a giant cake for the next 30 minutes. I think it's gonna be a harder test for the poor dog. <laughs> the dog woke the hell up. <laughs> what, what a nightmare world we brought this dog yeah. into today. In case you've uh, had any concerns that this show was uh, well put together and not really stupid, I'm sorry. Hey, you want, to see, want to see Peppers' tricks? That was really fun. Anyway, uh, happy birthday, Max. To celebrate, on top of that cake, we played a game where you can punch a bunch of people in the face. It's called Paint the Town Red. Let's get in a big old-fashioned American bar fight with a bunch of crazy people. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Brian Altano, and this is Max Scoville, and we are about to paint the town red. We found a little game on Steam called Paint the Town Red, yeah. and it's basically a a bar fight simulator. I thought it was a game about painting. It's not. not at all. It's a game about getting in fights with people you don't even know in a bar. Here That's we right. are at a nice biker bar. Look at these men. This is some dudes. They're just hanging out. A couple guys having some beers. Yeah, they're all doing a good thing. This no. guy's eating a steak alone. I guess somebody stood up. I'd be angry too if I had to eat that awful looking steak by myself. It's a T-bone. Uh, you sure can't tell. So, you know, this is a dangerous place, obviously, but it is pretty calm right now. These, these guys, guys are mad. not they're, happy they're, they don't like that I went to the kitchen. That's very bad. I'm okay, now leave. a fight has actually ensued because you broke into the kitchen. I didn't mean to. Oh, God, this is bad. Well, Axel brutal. Rose over look at there. How, look at how red the town already oh, is. Oh, my God. All right, get out of that kitchen. Man, get this place is a disaster now. You know what I like? I like jump kicking guitar players in the face. I feel like this is... Uh, that like, everyone in this game looks like John Totoro. Pretty much. Check this out. That's not how you play the drum. But um, I'm freestyling. Oh, these guys are not. They don't like <laughs> my performance cheers. art. Wow. All right, let's try that again. All right, so obviously going into the kitchen, bad plan of attack. That's yeah. the one way to start a bar fight. I think you should start a bar fight the good old-fashioned way. Just walk up to somebody and just cold clock him right in the head. This guy. I don't like this Bob. I don't like his face one bit. Bop! What? Karate kick. Oh, man, he got it real bad. Right. He got green junk all over his head. He got a stool. You kicked the puke out of him. Care for a stool sample? Look, these guys are fighting each other. I like you punch that one guy and everybody in the bar is like, it's clobbering time. Hold on, these like guys are going upstairs. Did you see that? It's probably, uh, it's probably, uh, I don't know. Like Look at that Muhammad Ali there? painting. What's over here? Over Let's get some weapons. Oh, man, those guys are really... Everybody's so violent here. It's great. Oh, that guy's getting fight hit with a, a guy pool with some... cue. Let's take a stake and beat a man into the head. That's good for Feel him. Feel the heat of the feet. It's the feet, the street feet you can't just beat. If he, uh... Get upstairs. If he gets real hurt, you can put that in the freezer for him, and he can use it to cool off his uh, old mutton chops. Yeah. There's Look a, at this. There's this is a, a, four, a little four-man. There's a lot of bars where people love to do this kind of stuff. Try to kick it. Yeah. All right. Ah! There's so a lot of people upstairs in so this bar. Dudes. That guy is not. Active. I feel like these guys were fighting already when it Look got Look at that here. guy. He was doing like the when you watch Jackie Chan movie when there's like one dude in the back who's just kind of like he's not actually fighting. Yeah, they're just kind of rooting for each other. Yeah, there's a lot of that here. Oh, this is, this is nice for some people flop, who want to sleep. Flop house. Sleep over. Oh God. What a strange man. All right, so our challenge is how many people can you hurt? I don't so think far, we're really, really counting. We're, we're hurting everybody. It's been a lot. There we go. Oh, God. Oh, man. Real, real dirty. Gotta get out of there real quick. Wow. Oh, look at all this blood in here. This blood bedroom. This looks like The Shining. This is awful. Oh, dude. This is pretty messed up. If this, this guy looked like Kratos. If these people didn't look like mini-mates, this would be real real bad. Hey, what's up? Oh, Somebody that's... left a knife uh -oh. on the roof of the bar. Uh-oh. It's on. This is going to be great. Oh, look at them. They're taking the stairs like Are you cowards. Ready? You ready for some stabbing? They started playing music. 
Oh, man. Your knife is gone. Good thing I think there's it's a stuck inside the, that James Hetfield looking dude's body back there. Hi, I'm Mike. <laughs> this is pretty fun. Max, who made this game? Uh, this is the guys who did uh, 30 Flights of Loving. This okay. is like so um, this, this is a different, a little thing. bit less loving in this one, I think. Yeah, this is like one flight of fighting. Oh. <laughs> so, so, what other cool weapons can we get? I see a there's a stage light up there that looks like it's about to fall. Can you get that moose head? I can't cheese. But I can do my performance art. Did, can I? Did they break the drums? There's there's too much blood on them. Bah, 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 bah. Uh, so so there's that meter course. on the right there. I don't really know what it's doing. See that? It's like the ball kicking meter. Yeah, I guess that's your kick. I think you use up stamina. Okay. Ah! Oh. Well, we, we give it did a it. No, we, I think you did a really right. good thing there. Look at that. Look at them just beat you senseless. That's, that's, that's surprisingly there. fun. The game only has two levels right now, but it's on Steam. If you want to go check it out, they are, uh, they're adding more to it. There's another one where you can go in a disco and punch some people in the face who have real silly clothes on. Yep. As opposed to these respectable folks in the micro bar. Oh, that's so unsettling. All right. Well, that was the Up and New Challenge. Thanks for watching. A bunch of dudes get their ass beat in a bar. I like video games. They're pretty weird. They're out. They're the future. Welcome back. This is Up at Noon live with Brian Altano and Max Scoville and Peppers the dog. Who's a good boy? You are. And Boba Fett, who's uh, lost an arm in the Clone War. Hey, Peppers, you going to bite Boba Fett? High five. Yeah. Sweet. So cool we got a lot dog. of questions from people all over the internet. We're on Twitch. We're on YouTube. We're on Twitter. We're on IGN everywhere. On Twitter, you can use the hashtag Up at Noon. Uh, man, a lot of good people today. So basically, are you okay? I think, right? I think he hates his collar. Is that what's going on? You don't feel like being a punk rock boy today? Really? All right. Uh, Jordan Mike Virtue on YouTube says, are Jedi allowed to get twisted or is that against the rules? By twisted, I think he means drank, fizzled, bunned. Uh, snorted. Grundled. Well, so yeah. Dunked. I mean, Obi-Wan straight up does go, like he does go to a bar and have a, have a, like a nice scotch. And then he does, he goes to like a, he goes to the Mos Eisley Cantina and he, like he walks in there like he knows the place. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, he knows how to, he knows how to behave in a bar. He's not like, He's not like the the uh, the monk in Fifth Element who's just all like awkward and like ah uh, I'm not allowed to do that like also I think that once all your friends are dead and like I think you're hold, held to less of a standard you know mm -hmm. he's sort of like eh. uh Et Moore saying says that's Chris Moore on Twitter says I think Max Scoville just pointed out the Star Wars is basically just intergalactic fight club yeah how do you feel about that I'm total I'm I'm kind of kind of on point with that I think it's more uh it's more of like American like late 60s early 70s counterculture mm -hmm. like you've, you've said it's a lot like you've said parts of it are kind of like boogie nights in a way a little bit i mean boogie nights i think is more like star wars yeah uh but really like i mean yoda's kind of like this new age healer late, late dude like he's he's sort of i mean there's definitely some like charles manson jim jones what are you doing he's rooting around real deep in that like chair. leia's sort of a sort of a patty <laughs> hearse like she's this well-to-do girl who gets who gets tangled up with like this this crazy army this symbionese <laughs> liberation front you know uh, Mike Arison says, Qui-Gon totally bonked me, Skywalker. Do you think that's a thing that happened? <laughs> yeah. I mean, Jedis have a code. Maybe but... he's Anakin's father. <laughs> How weird would that be? Just you put that butt, get that butt out of my face. It's a nice butt. It's right I don't want to see that butt. butthole. Looks like a funky trumpet. <laughs> what else we got from the viewers? Having a oh, good show. Man. Why are you trying to eat your own bed? Hey, I got a cool idea. What do we got here we can put easy cheese on? Patrick Quinone says, you guys make my Thursday afternoon something to look forward to, so keep on trucking. Thank you. And thank you so much for people who watch this show on the times where it's not noon. Like, I understand that that's a very specific place where clocks ca happen, but it's it's actually like 4 o'clock in the morning somewhere. Like, I got tweeted by a guy who said he had to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning just to watch our show. Thank you so much for doing that. That's kind of amazing. I, I that is, is, are you giving him Duke Nukem? Wait a I got, minute. I got an idea. No. No. All right. Oh, my God. Peppers is doing body shots off of Duke Nukem. <laughs> yeah, buddy. I'm here to get licked and chew oh, bubble yeah. gum, and I'm all out of bubble gum. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the Hail Duke is to the back. king, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
I like to hire a big dog to this lick my tummy. This is exclusive footage of the new Duke Nukem game right Randy here. Randy Pitchford is riding a cease and desist as we speak. Wow. All right. Lick uh, my abs, you Pomeranian speaking dog. Speaking of things that are absolutely terrible to look at, NASA has urged everyone to stare at the sun. They've released new four... Ah! <laughs> New 4K photos of the terrifying, massive ball of fire that lives above us all and can kill us if we get too close or stare at it. If you want to know what That's it's there. like to be real dumb people like us, uh, we went into a conference room and I was like, Hey, Brian, <laughs> do you ever think about what the sun yeah. is? He doesn't like the sun do either. You? Peppers don't like that sun. Yeah. What, are you, what are you barking That's a bad at? sun. Who's a bad sun? What is it, boy? Is it the sun? Is it burning really bright? Is the sun on fire still? Is it the ball of fire that if you get cl too close to it, it'll kill it? you? Is it the fire? The fire in the sky? That Who's we a bad at? fireball? Let's take a look at some of this footage. It looks like a <laughs> one-amp visualization from like... Wow. I was in iTunes the other day and I thought I was in my browser <laughs> and I wanted uh -huh. to like open a new tab, but I opened up visualizations and I thought I was either my computer was exploding or I was having a serious stroke because it just started making like weird funky shapes. Look I at that. Like, what? Yeah, Mason what is just that? died, I think. That's the sun? Yeah. Dude, we gotta blow that thing up. <laughs> we gotta shoot I love that stuff we're, that we're like worried about it burning out. We're like, yeah, it's uh, it's gonna go out one of these days. I'm like, I'm good it'll about it. I'm cool with that. Look it'll at that. be fine. Look at this nightmare planet. No, I think that's kind of weird. It's not a planet. Shh. It's kind of weird that we live our lives on this earth and we're like, oh, look at the new Call of Duty game. And above us at all times is this death ball. Like, and we're just okay with it. Like, you know, I don't like when there's a mosquito in my house. Well, so I love that you were saying that, like, if you go within a million miles of this giant burning thing of fire, you'll just explode in a fire. Yep. But you'll explode and freeze to death and suffocate on the way there in the meantime. Space is awful. I love that we're like, let's, let's go to another planet. That's a, like, I support that, kind of. But my yeah. God, it sounds awful up there. Yeah, it's I really depressing. I'm so glad we have the sky. I'm so glad we have clouds, because otherwise we'd just be staring in, into nothingness. Like, if the sun was... Oh, and I actually like that the moon comes out, like, all right. It's like a beat cop, and he's like, all right, all right, you got to go home. Uh, we got a question from... It was just here. I lost it. Whatever. Uh, basically, he says, uh, what does what does Pepper smell like? Luis Rivera, what does Max's dog smell like? Oh, let me do yeah, why don't you do a nice things. wine tasting with my dog's smells? <sighs> He smells like the, the part in the, the Ikea where they sell hot dogs and ice cream. That's an interesting part. And also part. like the, the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for smelling my dog on the internet, Brian. Uh, we got a cool thing that I'm excited about. Uh, there's some new planets. Well, they're not new planets. They, show, they gave us a little walking tour of Star Wars Battlefront. Yeah. Uh, I was a little bit, I think I was a little bit wary of the fact that they're like, yeah, there's, there's four planets in Star Wars Battlefront at launch. There's Hoth, Endor... Uh, Solist. Solist and Jakku. And Jakku. And right. Tatooine. No, no, Jakku. Actually five. Yeah, Tatooine at launch, Jakku after launch. But these four, there are four planets, and I think that kind of read to us like, oh, that's four maps. That sucks. <laughs> I know. That pre order bonus is, is nuts. I don't, nobody, yeah, people shouldn't have to pay that much for a thing. Peppers is mad at me because I bought the season pass. And I'm, I'm a yeah. big, big, huge, um, fat hit. But they gave us these kind of that. these nice, like, tours of, of Star Wars planets. What Star Wars planet do you want to see? So uh, we saw Tatooine that was actually in the beta in just the sort of... Now, it doesn't really have a single-player mode, but there's stuff in the beta that was basically kind of mission-based. Like, mm -hmm. you have to kill all these waves of stormtroopers while Chicken Walker ATSTs come in. I love Tatooine. It's, like, probably one of my favorite planets in, in the Star Wars galaxy. We saw a part of it that was basically the sort of, like, hillside, mountainy, crate dragon looking area where, you know, not it's a lot to Yeah, on. it's where, like, the Tusken Raiders live yeah. to eat drink water out of old pumpkins or whatever but, they do. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how they eat. They're just like, Whoa! I like they just steal car parts and they're like, maybe there's water in this. And they're like, nope, there sure isn't. We still have to be mummies, I guess. And they have to walk in a row and smell yeah. each other's farts like the human centipede. <laughs> it's disgusting. Well, anyway, there's parts on Tatooine that are really cool, like Most Isley, which is basically like this da the downtown bar area, right? Like it's basically like the Tenderloin here in San Francisco. Yeah. It's kind of like... Rut and Dutton, dirty town, right? Rut and it's real gross. Dirty town. There's bars everywhere, and uh, just yeah. do backs all tied up to stuff. If like we that. don't see a Moss Eisley or Moss Espa map, yeah, like, maybe not in the game at launch, but pretty close on the hit, like I will be very surprised because everyone loves Moss Eisley. Yeah, it's a wretched hive of scum and villain. To yeah, piggyback on that or uh, Jabba back on that, I want uh, 
Jabba's Palace. I want that huge indoor sort of cavernous maze mm -hmm. that's a Rancor pit in it, and it's got those, you know, labyrinthian areas all over the place that lead to the places where they're torturing droids, and the bar, and you can see Han Solo in the Carbonite, which would be non-canon if you see Han Solo come in as a hero and basically have to shoot himself. It'll be weird. Yeah. But I, I want to explore areas like that because this is the best-looking Star Wars game we've ever gotten, mm -hmm. and I want to be able to see places like that. So where so do you want to go, Max? I really want to do some expanded universe stuff. Uh, my favorite Star Wars planet has always been Nar Shadda, which mm -hmm. is, of course, the moon of Nal Hutta, otherwise known as the Vertical City, which is basically just like parts of Coruscant, you see. It's kind of what 1313 was. Yeah. It's just a really grimy smuggler's, smuggler's moon. Uh, but I'd love to see that be like a map that uses a heavy emphasis on jetpacks and like maybe some kind of flying vehicle that is, is like, I don't know what you'd use, like a, like a something that's not, like if you got an X-Wing in there, you'd just be like crashing, you'd be like trying to drive in San Francisco or New York could, or whatever. You could sit on a gonk um, droid. That'd be interesting. You could sit on a gonk droid. <laughs> no, but like, I mean, something... Some kind of hover hover speeder type thing, um, but it'd be cool if it was like like one of those just wonderfully like vertical maps. What's that? What's that Halo one? It's all like just a lot of a lot of climbing up in spires. Like, right, right, right. right. Uh, or like the Unreal map uh, Opposing Worlds, but it's across like a giant freeway intersection. Yeah, and there's just like ships going back and forth. That could be crazy. See, I think a lot of people are thinking about like all of these planets have to be like huge, open, and vast. But if you look at the Hoth map that was in the beta, there's a lot of indoor stuff. Like you actually jump into the the ship hangars and stuff. And like I actually. Was I was doing a fight as the Empire, and somebody summoned Darth Vader, and I did this awesome thing, which is basically like when a car follows an ambulance, and Darth Vader started running down this tunnel, force choking everybody, and I was just behind him, just like shooting people here and there, so they they would get shot, and he'd run up and force choke them. So I think indoor areas could work. That was like one of my favorite things about Goldeneye. It wasn't really like the temple or some of the larger areas with like huge ca kind of cavernous spaces, but more like the tight knit stuff. And that's why I kind of want to see some stuff on Cloud City. Yeah. Like I feel like there's a lot of really cool architecture in there that you don't see a ton of. Um, and if you wanted to pull out and head to the ship battles, you had those cool, what are those like orange clown cars they fly around it's just on? A cloud, or it's a twin pod cloud car. I that's right. Called, I knew you would know a, the name of that. Really, uh, really unimaginative last minute. <laughs> that's right. Uh, Joseph Davies says, hashtag up at noon. Why do you abuse peppers, Max? Does not. I don't abuse him. I'm feeding him cheese right now. You fed him cheese off of a, a misogynist video game hero, but other than that, that's not really abuse. That's actually Duke was finally getting his comeuppance, and he actually probably enjoyed it knowing him. Comeuppance is actually Latin for having food licked off you by a dog. I don't know if you knew that. Um, so uh, video games are great. They're a cool thing that we all like to do. Mm -hmm. They just made some new machines that make real pretty video games. Yeah. They still make games for those old machine games that they play them on. Call of Duty Black Ops 3 looks pretty good on uh, on Xbox One and PS4. It looks pretty gorgeous, PC. actually. We, uh, we played it leading into the show. We got some screenshots of what it looks like on 360 compared That's right. to Xbox One. These are courtesy of allgamesbeta.com, which is, uh, if you've never been there, wonderful yeah, resource. They, they for... actually pulled those from a YouTube user named Candyland. Okay. Uh, who, he actually did a graphics comparison. You can go check out his video um, on YouTube. But this is like, okay, so this is actually one of the better looking scenes yeah, right this here. One's, this one's all right. Let's now, get, let's... This, is, this is what I want to ask you. Did games look like this or is this not a good looking game? Or do we remember games incorrectly? I know that happens a lot, right? Obviously, this looks gorgeous on Xbox One. The textures, the shadows, incredible stuff. The so lighting that shot's, effects. That shot's all right. It's yeah. a little bit, little bit muddy textures, but this is kind of what we were seeing towards the end of last gen anyway with yeah. like some games being like up, upscaled on PC anyway. Uh, let's look at this one. Nah. This is rough. Yeah, is in, indeed. That's a little bit right rough. Peppers. That does look rough. Um, I like this just this this copy machine thing in the on the left side here. I, I mean, honestly, like, they don't even make it light. It's not even on. They don't make it light up. It honestly looks like they went for like this sort of flat, minimalist mirrors edge look, but that's not what Call of Duty is. Yeah, these like these. This isn't what Call of Duty looked like last gen. No, we that's, played we played Black Ops down. 2 on Xbox 360. It was a great looking game at the time. I think it probably still looks pretty good. These are rough, man. Yeah, this is pretty bad. That's not a that's not a pretty looking thing at all. And that really sucks because a ton of people are still playing on last gen. Yeah. Um, here's here's one. This one, eh, it's just kind of like different. This looks like a completely different game. Like a yeah. completely different artist came in here. Like, shh, Peppers Stop is not barking. like that. He man. does not like the he does not like that one bit. Um, that one's funny because it's like it's like an entirely different setting. It's a totally different day. One of yeah. them is peaceful. One of them is a tornado. What if that thing kills you and they just don't? T they're just you just get blown over in the three. So I think I told you about this. One of my favorite like anecdotes of like sort of demakes was that they made Call of Duty games for the DS, and they were always like this. Like obviously not to this extent. Like yeah, this is kind of rough looking, man. Yeah. 
Uh, here's a weird thing. They just added a shadow. They added, I guess there's less less different types of light you can have. Yeah. But that's kind of a funny thing. It's weird because the, um, the natural stuff, that's the Up at Noon logo. If you, a, if you compare it to the old Up at Noon logo. This is my I, favorite right here. <laughs> this one is my absolute favorite because they straight up, they didn't even have snow, they and, they, snow. and they had to use a regular van. Yeah. Look at that. They, you don't even get future vehicles. It's not, it's like those are regular vans. They just used regular... It's terrible. That's right. So let us know what you think. Use the hashtag up at noon. We just have a few minutes left here on the show. We'd love to talk to you guys and do some social question. Uh, Hidden Lies says, Max, what did you think of Life is Strange? So I played the first episode and I was kind of into it. I thought that it very much felt like a game about American teenagers written by French guys. Like it was sort of the way they, the way they said slang things. It felt a little bit contrived. Yeah. Then again, you know, like. I don't know. I said dumb things, and I said hell a lot when I was a teenager. I still probably kind do. Of, kind of like Heavy Rain, where the, the children spoke for like weird French, yeah. but the it parents... Was, it was odd writing. Um, You're a gammy killer. I really like the fact that I was playing as like a teenage girl, and that, yeah. like that was kind of a nice change of pace from being a, a you know bearded white guy. And it was, as far as adventure games go, it was like, I was curious. Um, I didn't get into I didn't get into the rest of it. I'm now that it's all out, I might go check out the entirety of it. But mm -hmm. uh, if you haven't checked that out, and you are interested in like kind of you know, games like Telltale Games, uh, definitely worth looking into. It's an interesting game. Uh, JMS of K IKN on Twitch says, Brian and Max collectively know about 20 adjectives and just smash them together. They are literally two Guy Fieri's. Well, this is a real tasty, cheesy, yummy, crunchy, delicious, funny, ugly, funky, punky mouth breather. And I really love it, and I love putting it inside my face and nah, 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 chewing on it in the back of the show. Hey, everybody, I'm Guy Fieri. Check on out the diners, drive-ins, dogs, and doggers, and we're going to do a real big tongue in the back of this restaurant. There you go. You got that out of me. Uh, Christopher Alexis says, Bloodborne, game of the year. You haven't played it yet, right? You're not a big nah, fan of the spooky games. I don't know games. if I'm going to play that. I don't know if I'm going to have the patience for that. Yeah. I'm at this point where I very much kind of want to, like, like, I sunk 90 hours into Metal Gear, uh, and I think I kind of want to just play, I want to play like a game that I can, I can like pick up and put down. And yeah. my understanding is that Bloodborne is much more of an investment than that. Um, I don't know. What else, what else we got? We got Fallout, obviously. Fallout's uh -huh. a big one. That's, what is that, next week? If, you, if you're burnt out on big open world games, man. That's, it's daunting. Yeah. It's a big game. It's actually almost a I want to play Micro Machines on my phone. Fallout is, God, like a baby. <laughs> Those cars are tiny. I got time for tiny cars. Fallout almost feels like a threat. Like, it's yeah. like. You got 200 hours? Yeah, you better make time. Like, so, it, it's, it's actually, everyone, it's, it's kind of crazy to watch the fall releases have sort of scattered around this. Like, Call of Duty comes out this week, right? We had Assassin's Creed a week ago. We have Tomb Raider, we have Fallout. All those things are happening at the exact same time. <laughs> After that, we've got Just Cause 3. Uh, there's a lot going on. A lot of these are just really big, really massive games. Yeah. I kind of uh, want to play Battlefront. Some, I kind of want to play some Disney Infinity. Like, I've got a bunch of those toys. We've played around a little bit on the show. Yep. Uh, but, like, I sort of, I didn't really feel like I finished it, and I was like, I kind of want to finish it. You know, like, you ever do that where you just get, like, a game that's admittedly, like, a game for kids, and you just kind of, like, relax? Yeah. Like, sometimes I don't want to get yelled at by drill sergeants and have dudes shooting at me and have blood everywhere and get, like, b my heart broken and then stabbed in the neck. So, games uh, are, <laughs> games are, are awful sometimes. Z Carrion says, do you think developers should continue to create games for the last-gen consoles? Of course they should. I mean, I... Like, it's a weird spot, right? Because obviously most people just can't afford to run out and buy $1,000 worth of consoles every, every yeah. couple of years. Like, if you, right, I'm sure, like, this fall, right, in three weeks, Black Friday, you'll probably be able to get an Xbox 360 for, what, like, 99 bucks with, like, seven games? Like, they just give those things away. Something like that, And for yeah. a lot of people, like, who didn't have, you know, if you've never played Fallout 3, I noticed Fallout 4 came with a code for it. And somebody in our Comedy Button Facebook group gave away that code. And it's just like, that's a nine-digit code that somebody was just like, here you go. And I'm like, that's like 300 hours of game right there. Yeah, that's, you can just be like, that's bonkers. Right? Uh, yeah, I, I always I was kind of, that's how I, I gamed growing up, was buying stuff when it was either like a price cut or like used or hand-me-down things. Yeah. Uh, one, of my, I, one of my favorite systems ever was a Game Boy Micro. I bought that after the Game Boy Advance was kind of getting phased out, and I would get random games on eBay and like, that's, that was fun. You seem like a very large man for a tiny Yeah, little... it looked real. And people didn't know I was playing games. They just like, that man's nervous. I'll just be like sitting there just twiddling my little thumbs with this minuscule thing. There's, there's something really awesome about coming into a system late into its life cycle. Oh, it's I mean awesome. real late. I haven't, I haven't had a 3DS. Yeah. Um, I had a 3DS, but I, I lost it. But like, I never got a chance to really get on board with it. And like, 
kind of want to do that. Kind of want to jump on that yokai watch and then so, explore that back catalog. Like, let me, let me put it this way: it's it's kind of weird that it's almost shunned upon by gamers to not be on the next level thing the moment it comes out. But like, there's no problem with going back and watching Breaking Bad or The Wire. Like in a well, binge session, a, five years after those shows there's aired. There's a bizarre double negative where it's like you didn't play this, you never played this, but it's also like, what are you doing playing that old that old thing, that old baby toy? Yeah, that's a that's a grandpa machine there. Like I watched Breaking Bad as it aired, and it was a nightmare because it was like every week there was a cliffhanger, and then the seasons were a literal year apart, which means it would just like there'd be this shootout, it'd be like ah, and it would be like created by Vince Gilligan, and we'd be sitting there like what, and I'd have to wait a full year for the for resolution on that. Uh, Video games are kind of the same way in that, like, I bought a 3DS at launch, then I bought the new 3DS at launch, uh, and I had to wait basically month to month. At, at the launch for the 3DS, there was, like, Pilot Wings, Dogs, like, some bubble-popping game. There's not a lot going on, but you're going to get to come in very late, and basically, like, you just got a Netflix subscription. Sure, sure. And you're going to go, hey, Brian, what 3DS game should I play? And I'll be like, oh, dude, like, this, yeah. well, these hundred games. And also, by then, like, I have a bunch of them sitting on my shelf. I don't play them anymore. I'll just give them to you. Like, there's something to be said for coming into a console cycle very late and getting to basically inherit the wealth of your forefathers for basically a fraction of the price. So it's really awesome. To back this up to what the original question was, is like, should game developers keep making games for old systems? Yeah. I think absolutely. I think that Call of Duty is a terrible example for like, like this is a big, big budget AAA game, and it sucks that they're like, they feel sort of obligated to be like, yeah, let's make this thing for the last gen. Instead of being like, I don't know, let's make like a, a sort of, keep supporting the older ones or maybe add like DLC. I mean, I guess that's probably one of those things where it's not worth it, but like you look at games that come out like for on PSN that come out for like PS3, PS4 and yeah. Vita. I love those because I mean, remember when it wasn't AAA, like when it was just there would be like mid mid level games and those were like, all right, these are fine, you know, like the middle. Yeah. The middle the middle is like a it's a thing that's kind of gone in the industry and you and I have been saying recently that it's I think it's on iPhones now. Yeah. Like that middle of the industry is sort of like it, it use it wasn't shovelware, but it wasn't triple A. It was like somewhere that with, just kinda sat it was like the with, THQs and the midways and stuff like that. With digital also, like there's an opportunity to do that because people are as long as you keep kind of servers up and running, like people who have this machine will yep. continue buying stuff to support it. Uh, I think it, it's an issue with making new games and with retail stuff because obviously manufacturers don't want to keep old stock. And that becomes this thing where it's like, hey, I know that we stopped selling this thing, but like, can you, uh, you know, and they obviously, you know, publishers also want to, or you know, uh, hardware guys want to move their machines too. So there's, yeah. a, there's an impetus to like get new stuff out there. But like, look at Blood Dragon, for instance. Like that was a, that was a $15 downloadable and that was an awesome game. Obviously that was on last gen, but like if they'd put out, Kind of a like a smaller scale game. Like I'm, I'm totally open to that kind of stuff. Where it's just here's something that we figured out how it works on current gen and last gen, and it's maybe not a super huge investment. And then it's, I think, I think with digital involved, also it's like it's less worry about flooding a GameStop, right? Like you don't have right. to have that section of like when you walk into a GameStop now and you walk to the Xbox 360 section and it's like 30 feet long. Yeah. Uh, and then you just watch it shrink over time. And they, there's somebody probably sitting there going like, oh, we got we to get, get these Vita games out of here. They're taking up too much space. Mm -hmm. well, but you and I are both of, on... Yeah, the idea of clearance online is totally just a fake thing. Yeah. It's just a familiar term. Uh, like, you and I are both on PlayStation Plus. Yeah. Um, and obviously, w w like, one thing I notice with that is that every month I'll get PS4 games, Vita games, and PS3 games. And it makes me go like, oh, should I turn on my PS3, which I actually still do have hooked up, yeah. and go, uh, I'll, yeah, I'm going to download... Max Payne 3, you know? Like, am I ever going to play that again? Maybe not. But it's cool that that stuff's still happening. So if you are subscribing to those things, A, uh, you're getting PS3 games, and B, if you ever do try to upgrade to a PS4, you're going to have a huge library of PS4 games waiting for you thanks to PlayStation Plus. Yeah. Um, Roshan Krishnan says, do you think games, awesome name by the way, do you think games should stop trying to strive to be massive open world games just for the sake of it? Yep. Totally yeah. think so. Thank you. Uh, I think that open world is this generation's multiplayer. And yeah. people are going to be just, or developers are like, this is what people want. Let's get it in there. And it's like, doesn't always improve the experience. <laughs> Damn right. High Damn five. Right. Yeah. Uh, Dog. I am Pasco says, I think both of you should have your own pets side by side. Lol. I don't have a pet. I wish you had a, I think you should have like a toad or something. I know. I really wish I had a dog. Anyway, uh, this this has been a fantastic hour. Max, I love you so much. I really do love working with you. I'm so happy it's your birthday today. This has been a treat. Yeah. It's been a lot it's of fun. Don't say treat too loud. That there's treat, dog treat, 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 uh, treat. Up next, Naomi Kyle and Bobby Amos will be playing Call of Duty Black Ops 3 campaign and zombie mode. 
right here on IGN Plays Live, so be sure to check it out. You literally don't even have to move. You can just stay put. We played a little bit before the show. It's bizarre. It's so cool. You gotta, it's basically Jeff Goldblum, the magician, fighting in Bioshock. It's Seriously, I'm not making this up. So stick around for that. Uh, remember, use the hashtag up at noon. Watch IGN for all your shows and all your video game news, reviews, previews. Uh, there's some big ones coming soon with some giant games coming down the pipeline. Uh, luckily, we're going to we have a review up for Barbie and her sisters. Barbie, Barbie and her sisters. Dog, That's a lie. We're not dog actually catching friends. I'm Brian. This is Max. This is Peppers. And High that five. was Up at yeah. Noon Live. Who's a good boy? You are. Yeah.